So thank you, Helen, for also having a, another interview on the issue of the Eurozone crisis. Now, the Eurozone it seems to be in a never-ending stagnation at the moment, and we don't know when that will uh, finish. Uh, let me ask you, what do you think needs to be done? Um, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so a lot of things obviously need to be done. First of all, the, um, the macro policy mix seems to be the wrong one. Mm -hmm. So clearly, uh, uh, monetary policy right now is not fulfilling its mandate mm -hmm. of a 2% inflation target, below 2%, but close to 2%. Now we are far from that. There are serious deflationary risks, mm -hmm. you know, uh, which have been highlighted for a, for a while now, mm -hmm. which, mm -hmm. you know, several economists have, including <laughs> me. <laughs> me? Okay. Uh, but unfortunately, we are uh, in a very dangerous uh, area. So definitely monetary policy has to deal with that and to fulfill its mandate. Uh, but also fiscal policy has been has been tight, and uh, there obviously there's a lot of heterogeneity in the euro area. Mm -hmm. uh, some countries have had to have uh, uh, you know austerity and tight fiscal policy because they had lost market access. Mm -hmm. so for those countries, you know you cannot be more expansionary if you can't borrow clearly unless you get some third party help, mm -hmm. uh, which was not extremely forthcoming. So mm -hmm. <laughs> so there's yeah. not much choice. But in countries where there is some, rule f some room for fiscal maneuver, then the room should definitely be taken as much as possible because you cannot have a depressed aggregate demand and tight monetary and tight fiscal policy. I mean, this just doesn't make any sense from, mm -hmm. a, from a macro policy point of view. Mm -hmm. So fiscal policy optimally should be looser where possible in the short run. Obviously, in the long run, uh, everybody uh, is very aware of the constraint on, on debt sustainability and all that. Mm -hmm. But so what you want to implement is looser in the short run and having some credible way of dealing in the medium to long term with debt sustainability. Now, you can do some reform from that. You can, you know, but there is a lot of, um, of cooperation among uh, your area countries here, which has to be done in order to have credibility, but at the same time being loser in the short mm -hmm. run. So that's the macro policy mix, which is very important. And obviously at the same time, uh, in various countries, there's a huge uh, unemployment issue, uh, in particular youth unemployment. And uh, we see it's a, it's a very serious problem. In some countries, uh, you know, we, we, I would even say that this is a threat to the political system. So uh, we have to do some, some things. Uh, in France, for example, uh, you know, youth unemployment is a very serious issue. Uh, unemployment for the middle-aged people is not is mm -hmm. not is not bad actually. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> it's a pretty tight labor market, but it's really focusing on uh, on the youth unemployment, which which will make a difference, and the, and much more active labor market policies mm -hmm. that we can learn about from other countries who have done it and where it seems to work, mm -hmm. like you know, in the UK, in Denmark, uh, in in Germany, in Not Austria, true. exactly with. Uh, uh, apprenticeship and all that, we we could do things. Mm -hmm. And even in weak macroeconomic conditions, we could definitely improve uh, youth unemployment. But active labor market uh, policies are quite costly, so it works quite well when the unemployment rate is relatively low. But when it has gone over a certain threshold, it's very difficult to have the res mobilize the resources to. Well, it's a question of it. again mm -hmm. of priority. Think mm -hmm. of the cost of uh, large youth unemployment. Mm -hmm. This is a cost not only now, obviously, but this is a cost for the future. I mean, you know, human capital mm -hmm. <laughs> is is a very important uh, is one of the key, in fact, mm -hmm. <laughs> element for for future growth. So, what uh, if you look at things in net present value? I think mm -hmm. you would you would still find that there is a, a huge benefit. I mean. Uh, uh, let alone all the political issues I, I just mm -hmm. discussed, but uh, you would have huge benefits in, in, in being a lot more proactive and putting more targeted resources and doing more reforms, mm -hmm. however politically incorrect they might be or however uh, you know, resistant they might be by some insiders' lobby, uh, you, would, you would gain a lot by, uh, by being a lot more active there. So, so reform, so you cannot do, you, know, you have to do the macro policy mix and you have to do reforms. And the last thing that would be ideal is uh, it would be to, to deal with uh, the legacy debt that we have also mm -hmm. uh, in the euro area, so the debt overhang issue. So let me go over two of these components mm -hmm. in more detail. Uh, you were talking about the macroeconomic policy mix uh, should be changing both on the fiscal and the monetary policy side. What do you see as the main obstacles why these policies would not go in this direction? 
Well, I think they are pretty uh, obvious. Mm -hmm. <laughs> As mm -hmm. we know, uh, uh, on the fiscal side, we have uh, some, uh, some rules which uh, put a straight jacket in, uh, on a number of countries, even though they have market access mm -hmm. and could borrow. And, um, and from another point of view, we have some countries who uh, don't uh, think that an expansionary fiscal policy would do any good. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a mistake. So mm -hmm. I think we have to, again, it has to be you know, a cooperative thing. Mm -hmm. uh, so one has to convince people that it is time, actually, to revisit these issues, while at the same time, and this is the difficulty, mm -hmm. uh, of course, it doesn't mean that you, you write a blank check and uh, you don't worry about that sustainability in the medium to long run. That's not the point. Mm -hmm. The point is to, uh, to have expansion now and then uh, to have sensible reforms to deal with the burden of debt later on. Mm -hmm. and, and, and to have credibility on this. So, so this is why you can only do it, you know, cooperating and, and, and talking to one another. So that's on the fiscal policy side yes. and the monetary policy side. Uh, some and people say it's currently pretty ineffective. Uh, how well, could you make it more effective? No, so on the monetary policy side, um, because of a type of... In so the ECB, first of all, has done a lot during the crisis. So the ECB has, you know, has had a key role in keeping the EU area together, mm -hmm. absolutely. Mm -hmm. And so now it just needs to do more because of the inflation target. It's just not reached, and that's very important to, to reach it. Um, so the way uh, the ECB has been uh, expanding liquidity is, uh, to a large extent, has been through LTROs and, and bank lending. And this has had the effect that as the banks have been repaying their loan, actually you look at the balance sheet of the ECB, it has gone down. Mm -hmm. You look at all the balance sheet of major central banks, they have been growing, mm -hmm. and then now they are kind of plateauing, but they have not gone down mm -hmm. as percentage of GDP. While in the euro area, the, the balance sheet of the ECB has actually gone down. So mm -hmm. we have been tightening. Mm -hmm. instead of expanding monetary policy. So mm -hmm. we definitely have to go back to a much more expansionary stance. And uh, this means we have to, um, to inject more liquidity. So we have to do you know, quantitative easing. We have to do all these things that the ECB is, uh, I hope, gearing up to, to, to doing now. Mm -hmm. And the recipe on the issue of the historical debt legacy, in a sense, mm -hmm. which is built up both in the sovereign debt area but also in the private sector, uh, which schemes could be used to deal with that? Uh, so one can think of various of various things to, to deal with that. It is a very difficult issue, obviously, mm -hmm. one of the main issues. Mm -hmm. And um, and right now, as the spreads are not high on the debt, I mean, there's probably very little appetite to deal with this. Mm -hmm. uh, but looking forward, one may want to actually uh, um, implement some uh, stock operation on the debt, uh, and there, there might be various ways of, of doing that. Uh, you know, one can think of uh, using um, different types of uh, fiscal revenues to, to deal with that, including some kind of uh, wealth tax or some kind of uh, other fiscal revenues that can, could be capitalized and used for a stock operation. But obviously you wouldn't do a stock operation if you were to create a huge amount of moral hazard. Mm -hmm. So you would have to do that only in a context in which countries doing the stock operation would sign up mm -hmm. uh, to a much, more, uh, much better governance structure for for the long run in terms of fiscal policy and mm -hmm. that would have to be a pretty you know credible long run structure so mm -hmm. in that context you could do a, a one off stock operation possibly and i would say possibly with transfers across countries because everybody would gain mm -hmm. and so one would you know not huge transfers necessarily but one one could consider some transfers to do a, a one off stock operation in exchange for a much better fiscal governance framework mm -hmm. so in any such uh, historical debt problem, there are quite strong redistributive or distributive implications, mm -hmm. uh, which are very difficult to carry through politically at the moment in yeah. Europe, is that right? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. This is why uh, I don't expect there's going to be much appetite for such an operation in the short run. Uh, but things could change if uh, pressure mounts, either from the political system side, if we have a lot of extremist parties taking, mm -hmm. you know, or close to power, that, mm -hmm. may, that may change quite a lot the incentives. Or, you know, a financial market accident also can happen. Uh, and then incentives again will change. But as things go along in the current situation, the fiscal space is always narrowing to uh, move in the direction which you are indicating, both more expansionary fiscal policy, but also the preparedness to spend money on relieving, uh, releasing the debt problem of some of the other countries. Definitely. On the other hand, uh, you know, we are a rich area. So mm -hmm. it's not that we are an area without resources. Mm 
um, we just fail to coordinate and to be willing to pull a tiny bit our resources, mm -hmm. uh, even on a temporary basis, mm -hmm. which a uh, one-off stock reduction you know, we would be. It would not be a permanent pooling of resources, it would be a temporary one to get rid of a problem. Uh, but again, incentives to do that may change depending on the, on the pressure. Uh, a last question on the banking union. Um, I think there was quite a move, but far from being sufficient to uh, install a proper banking union. How do you see the further developments of the banking union? Yeah, so the banking union was definitely a positive step. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so was the uh, asset quality review and, and the stress testing. Uh, so we, it's quite an achievement actually still mm -hmm. to have done yeah. <laughs> what was done mm -hmm. in, uh, within the time frame. When you think mm -hmm. about it, it's, mm -hmm. uh, it was a pretty heroic uh, attempt and it's, uh, you know, it was pretty serious. Uh, so that's, that's a good thing. Um, obviously, we are still far away from, I think, having you know, a credible resolution framework uh, and also having, um, uh, we don't have deposit insurance uh, mm -hmm. still. Uh, but um, uh, it always works like that in Europe. We go, <laughs> we go little by little. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, bail-in uh, of uh, private creditors is a good, uh, is a good also uh, first step. Mm -hmm. And uh, we just uh, have to see how, how it works. I mean, uh, obviously, it will always have to be adapted. I mean, as we go along, we'll have some, uh, some, learning some refinements and, uh, and learning to do. But, mm -hmm. uh, but we, you know, we are moving in the right direction. Thank you very much. This looks like a positive note to end with. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. you. <laughs>